Hey everybody, Wendy Clinky here with Blue Cat Studio. All right, so it's day three of the Advent Ornament Challenge. And so I just wanted to kind of give you guys a quick update. Here's the two that we've already done. And then we've got a couple more here. So I'm just gonna pick one. I think I wanna do the hot pink polka dots. And we're gonna do design number three. So we'll move those guys aside. Now, to prep for this, because it's really small and trying to hold this down while you paint, because it's gonna travel, it's gonna drive you crazy. So we're gonna take a little bit of tape. You're gonna make a tape loop, attach it. And that should keep it fairly secure. And just for giggles, I'm also gonna tape gently across the top. So this is blue painter's tape. Um, there you go, okay. So we'll grab a reasonable sized, slightly large brown brush and some neon pink. So I'm basically using, oh, that is such an ugly bottle. Here's a pretty bottle. I'm using the DecoArt Americana neon pink or sizzling pink, one of my favorites. And we're just getting a really good base coat here. Want it nice and vibrant. And of course, Trying to, we're aiming to do this in 20 minutes or less. Hopefully you'll join me. And if you don't get a chance to finish it while I'm painting live, that is perfectly okay. You can totally catch the replay. Now my, I'm gonna just offload the brush on a piece of junk mail here to get the excess off and give it a quick, a quick rinse. Whoops, I got a whole bunch of paint on the neck of it and give it a rinse. So I'll let that dry real quick. I'll even give it a quick blast. I do this with two hands, rinse and dry, rinse and dry. And that's pretty much it for that larger brush. So I'm just gonna, I'm giving it a solid rinse, dry it off, set it aside. And I know that I'm gonna need to do, do more with it. Let me rearrange my stuff a little bit. Okay, and if you're in the online paint night group, um, we're gonna be doing this guy on Sunday, should be super fun. All right, now this guy's fairly dry. We will grab um, let's, a small, medium. I don't like this guy. You know what? I, I set it out and then I changed my mind. I'm going to go with a slightly different. Here we go. We'll go with a nice cheapy one. You know, it's an Amazon special, but these things are really reliable. So we're going to grab some mermaid tail teal right here. And that is this guy right here. Mermaid tail teal. Absolute favorite of mine. A dark teal would be fine. A peacock teal would be fine, and we're gonna mix. So set that aside, then I'm gonna grab some yellow, and you can use the daffodil yellow from um, Folk Art, or the other yellow that I really like, it's quite similar, is the one from Hobby Lobby, it's the Anita's Canary. It's very, very bright. It's almost lemony. Hopefully you guys can see that. Hey there, Vivian. Thank you for joining us. I see Vivian there and I've got Holly. I'm streaming live on a couple places on different cameras. So bear with me if I mention someone you're not seeing. All right. Now we're going to take this green and we're going to draw best effort a circle. Anybody guess what we're going to do if I'm just mixing green and doing this here? Yeah. Okay. So I'm feeling like this green's a little bit too bright. So I'm going to take just the mermaid tail out here first. We're going to begin and create an oversimplified wreath. And do you see how I'm just doing lines off and there's plenty of gaps? Do not overthink this. Don't get fancy on me now. Trust the process. We're gonna do a whole lot of layers. So this is your opportunity to just kind of play, relax, add those paints. I'm really just kind of almost placing the brush shape down to kind of get that, that coating. Now that looks pretty dark and that's okay. Right, because this is an under, this is an undercoat. It's a base coating. Whoopsie! All right, just spin that a little. I might throw a few extra, you know, kind of fill this guy in because I want a really good base coat. But you want to have a few stray bits that kind of fly out and make it fluffy. Hey, sister, what's going on? I love it when you guys say hello and chat with me. It makes it so much more fun, and that way I'm not like talking to myself and. Going off on tangents. I mean, I right, never mind. I'm still going off on tangents. Okay, I've got a lot of paint on my brush, but I think we can just sort of work it into the mix. So I have my green and I have my teal. So this guy is mostly teal. Let's see if I can bring that up. I'm going to take this up to a couple different cameras, so bear with me. You can kind of see it. It's a little dark. That looks very dark. Let's give it a quick blast here. 
So I know it seems crazy that this is attached to paper, but in all honesty, when it's attached to paper, it it's a whole lot easier to manage. And I don't have to be like putting all my, my knuckles in here like this. And you'd be like, I can't see what she's doing. All right. So carrying on with that green, we're going to kind of do some overlaps. You're going to do similar, but maybe not quite as many bits on top. And again, it does not need to look like a, <coughs> oh, excuse me, like a full reef. We're just trying to get some basic bits here. Um, so Holly asks, is that a leafy green? Yeah, it's basically the canary and the mermaid tail mixed together. And I tried to keep it fairly bright, but also a little bit in the dark zone. Okay. So now we've got that kind of leafy green. So now we have two layers here. The teal underneath, it's dark and it's rather subtle. I'm gonna give it a quick blast. And now I'm going to grab some more yellow and just kind of mix it into, let's see, can you guys see that? Mix it into the corner here to create a lighter, brighter, springier green. All right, that's pretty close to dry. Oh, Holly says she spaced out. That's okay. Yeah, all right. So teal, the basic green, the new green. And this is for the next layer. And again, just kind of creating some bits and pieces. It can be sparse in places less sparse than others. Just kind of having fun getting that out there. And again, it's going to look like a really full wreath and all that extra color is, is going to give it a little bit of nuance. We got a little thick over there, but I think we can pull this off. All right. So what did we do last time? We're going to do it again. We're going to grab a hunk of yellow and mix it over here in the corner to that lightened up some. I almost want that to go lighter. I think Did I dry this. I spaced. I didn't dry it. Holly, I caught the whole space out thing from you. I spaced. Forgot to dry this guy. So the goal of this Advent Ornament Challenge is really to give us the opportunity to paint every single day, but in a low commitment manner. You know, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes like when I'm like, okay, I got to paint. I have like, it's like all the stars have to align if I'm going to paint. And if all the stars have to align, you know, when, how often does that actually happen? Kind of like not often enough. And so I'd rather get us painting and just keeping it quick and simple and light. So I'm now taking that lighter green. It's almost a yellowy citrus color. Now you could use straight out of the bottle colors, but I have found at least for my personal sensibilities, because I kind of like things to be screaming, that I get you know better greens or greens that I'm much happier with when I mix, especially if I'm using these super vibrant colors. I mean, you can, I'm almost in the CMYK range here, which is the cyan, magenta, and yellow, as opposed to RYB, which is red, yellow, blue. So that's my school of mixing. Okay, so now we've suddenly got, we've got like some good layers here and some good kind of nuance. So I think we can get away with a little bit more yellow over here into the green. And just for giggles, I'm going to, desaturate it with a little bit of white. So adding just a touch of white to that to pop it up to the surface a bit more, really light. Gonna go easy on this one. But again, we just are trying to add some texture. Oops, I messed up on that one spot. All right, so if I'm messing up, then I, I should probably be coaching it to you guys as well. When you're doing a little stroke, you wanna start at the base and then swoosh out kind of away. And we're kind of creating like almost like V shapes little bits. Now, if you join me for this every single day, I am guaranteed going live on the, um, well, definitely in my, my Blue Cat Inner Circle membership. You guys get everything. Um, but I'm also going to be going live quite a bit on the Blue Cat Studio Art page. And then throughout the the month, we'll be popping on live in various different groups to share. That way, everybody gets a bit of the love because I got to tell you, I only have so many cameras. <laughs> I know. Is that ridiculous? It is a little ridiculous. Okay. So now we've got kind of like a nice, fun, nuanced ornament here with a lot of, a lot of texture. Go ahead and offload your brush. That's a, that's a lot of stuff. And then you can rinse it. And I just like to get rid of the excess paint before I rinse. It just keeps things a little cleaner, a little easier. And go ahead and dry it off. And we'll give it a quick blast. Pow. We love a good pow. 
And again, I love being able to just get this stuff done early, easy, quick, no big deal. Now let's add some candles to the background here. All right, so you're gonna need, you've got your yellow, you've got your white. We're gonna need a tiny bit of brown. This one is bittersweet chocolate, but you could use a you know raw umber, burnt umber, dark chocolate. I mean, there's so many options. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of an orangey color. I have tangerine, jack-o'-lantern, orange would also work. So I'm putting very small amounts on my canvas. I'm just going to kind of mix kind of a cream color. So you notice I'm kind of pulling the colors out and I'm going to put little bits in. So that got a bit orangier than I wanted. So adding a little bit of the brown, a lot of the brown, that's fine. All right. So again, we often are doing a base coat. So here's my top. So we want to make sure that we kind of got the center kind of right here. Now, if you're thinking, well, that's and that's an ugly color. Yeah, you're right, it is. And it's fine because it's a base coat. I'm gonna do just kind of three long skinny rectangles right here that represent candles. And as ever, I always suggest, hey, trust the process, trust the process, trust the process. Sometimes stuff starts off a bit awkward and we kind of bring it together through, through um, additional layers. Okay, so now I'm gonna just kind of dip into that brown a little bit and kind of, that's a good brown, I think. Maybe a little bit more. I've got a lot of paint on my brushes right now. I'm gonna come down the side of this, kind of along that top edge and a little at the base. And I know it looks super weird. And if you're like, what is she doing? I get it. I look at it, I'm like, oh, oh, nervous. That doesn't look the way I want it to, but it's going to. That's where we're going with this. I'm gonna offload paint because I feel like my brush is super covered in paint and it's making me a little crazy. So now coming in and grabbing a little bit of white. I'm just kind of grabbing a, just a pinch of this sort of taupey color and mixing it with a white over here in the corner. And so when you kind of mix like a set of colors, being able to sort of pull little bits off that center mix piece allows you to kind of stay in the same color family and keep the look consistent. And I'm gonna kind of come over, especially covering the right side of that candle. And notice I haven't brought out the dryer recently because I'm kind of hoping that I can blend that white in with those dark undertones that we just painted on. Some of it's drying pretty fast, so I might have to, to add a few more layers of subtlety in there to get it quite where we want it, but it kind of gets the sense of it. Okay, so I've kind of filled in, I'll bring this up here so you guys can see close. I filled in the center and you can see there's a little bit of the brown there. Now adding the brown on top, it's just asking for you to have a really good hand with your brush. And if you don't have a good hand with your brush, you're gonna be going crazy there. Okay. All right, so now we've got some kind of candles that are coming into play. Let's go ahead and add, I'm gonna mix a flame color. So I'm gonna grab some yellow, just a tiny touch and some white, a little bit more yellow. Make sure you don't grab yellow that had green in it. Now I'm making a very light color. It's almost too light, but the idea is that we're gonna create like just a, the base and then we'll add more color on top of that. And you're just gonna give yourself a couple of little flames here. Hopefully our wreath doesn't catch on fire. So the fun part with like this whole advent ornament challenge is that by the end of, you know, the month, you're going to have 25 cool ornaments. And I'm thinking this weekend and over the course of next week, I'm going to create a design for like how you can cut a board with some hooks where you can then attach all of these and maybe put like numbers on the board so that you can then like excuse me, flip them over or pull each of these out of a bin, you know, looking at this side and you know, something to kind of add the element of surprise. All right, I've got that mix color. I'm gonna grab just a touch of my tangerine and work it. So we're doing a lot of mixing in case you hadn't noticed. I worked it right into that yellow blend that we just had. And that creates like, that's kind of that warm candle glow that you often see. I'm gonna bring just a little bit of that kind of right up here at the top of each of the candles and then kind of drag it down the side, the right side, sort of in the highlight zone. So the idea is we're trying to kind of pick up some of the some of the glow because you know when you light a candle that flame actually causes the wax to glow a bit 
we're trying to just keep, we're trying to channel that feeling right here. So I might even create like a little tiny line right above the, the dark line. It kind of shows the inside there. All right. So this is very fine. If this brush, which is kind of big, is too big for you, you're always welcome to move down to something really small. This is a Winsor Newton triple zero. I think I got it at Michael's. It's around. It's a cool liner brush. I just got these nail brushes in. I haven't tried them out and I'm not going to today because you never try a new brush like this, like live on the air, but check it out. They're for neat de detail nails. It looks like a mermaid and it has this ultra fine. Actually, that's nice and stiff. That'll be amazing. Amazon. It's like four bucks for like three brushes. I couldn't resist. I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to try them out. And if they're awesome, great. And if they suck, well, um, that's okay too, because they're like four bucks. But I'm, I'm, I'm pretty rough on my brushes. I don't know about the rest of you, but I am rough on my brushes, no matter how hard I try. So I'm going to switch down to our smaller brush here. And we'll stick with a guy that we know who's predictable. All right, let's get a little bit of orange in that flame. So just gr directly grabbing the orange, we'll put some in at the base here. So if you're wondering why I did a, a, a preliminary coat, it's really because we needed some white to block out bits of that, that pink, so that it would not seem transparent. I'm going to dip directly in the yellow, kind of add that to the flame as well. And again, this is very, this is very close work. It's probably a little bit hard to see, so I apologize. I think those flames want a bit of white to them too, just to kind of make them pop. So I'm gonna put a little dot of white right in the middle. Bring that up a bit here. Well, first so you guys can see. Again, we're working very, very small. Let's let the autofocus go. So I've got, so for those of you here, hi, I have a camera right up there. And for those of you there, I have a camera right over there. Y'all get that? That makes sense? Okay. I'm going to add a little bit more highlight to this candle. It feels a little bit flat to me. So kind of going on the edge just below, just below the brown line across the top and right up here and just kind of down. So we're covering some of the part where we added a bit of our glow in. We're just adding a little extra, extra, extra light, extra highlight. There we go. Okay. So those are coming together nicely. They're looking pretty round. Just gonna offload some of that paint. And you know what you can do here? You can grab a toothpick or a, what is this? It's a, a skewer. And we can just stick it in the brown. I love toothpicks. And you can kind of create like the wick very, very gently. I mean, toothpicks are not great for really long lines, but sometimes when you're trying to just strategically place something, it kind of guarantees you like a certain width. So now we have wicks, which to kind of make a lot of sense. Um, you never get, so Holly says, if you, um, is that an orange yellow? Okay, so the orange I used, you mean this orange here? That was a tangerine. I think I'd originally said use jack-o'-lantern orange, but then I somehow managed to pull it out of my bin and leave this one in there, so. My bad. So you could mix yourself a, an orange yellow. So we've got a lot of colors in here. We've kind of got an orangey yellow and white. Oh, the last highlight was pure white. Before we did the dark, we did, before we did the dark wick there. All right, I'm going to rinse my tiny little brush here before the paint dries. That's the other hazard of working with such a teeny tiny brush is that the paint dries on it really fast and it's so easy to ruin. Oop, we don't want to get our all our stuff on our cute selfie snowman inner circle folks you're gonna get that real soon and um those of you in online paint night we're doing this sunday live so so inner circle folks this one's a bonus let's grab some red i am using the anita's tomato red it's nice and bright you could also go with like a fire engine red something real bright i don't think we need a ton just a little tiny smidge here See that little top, little dot, dot, dot. Can't talk today. So I often like to, to dot my stuff, but this is so small, I'm finding that I'm not getting the dots the way I want them. So we're gonna add some, some dots. So just little red dots kind of all along. It's like little berries in your, 
Do your thing. I'll bring that closer for a minute so you guys can kind of see that we're adding the, whoops, see if I can do this on camera without messing up. Sort of like floating work here. And I'll come up here to this guy so you guys can see better. Boop, boop. Come on, autofocus, do your job. <laughs> All right, keep going. And so again, if you want to make sure that you see all of these, just pop on Blue Cat Studio Art. Make sure you follow us. That way you don't miss any of these. And I'll try and label them so you can find them. Inner Circle folks, that's my membership. Those guys are my insiders, and they get access to every single project I ever complete. And it's a paid membership. We just had a membership opening, and it was awesome. We welcomed all kinds of really great new gals to the group. I'm not sure exactly when we'll be open next. I think officially it's going to be spring of 22. Because again, I try not to spend too much time in sales mode. That's not fun. I prefer to be in art mode. So by keeping the doors closed and then just opening every, you know, six months or so, it allows me to really focus and give you guys my 100,000 gajillion percent. All right, so those berries look very, very dark. So I'm going to take, we're going to do this little thing here, add some white. Now, I do this a lot. I, I mess with my colors, and I add a lot of white, often for base coats, when I'm applying dark on dark or have a color that needs more intensity. So I've mixed kind of red and white, and it kind of looks like a pink, and it doesn't really matter exactly what it is. The real point is that the white is in there because the white, it's titanium, tends to be very opaque. All right, so we're going to take this, and we're going to kind of create these swooping S's, like S turns, like if you're skiing. So we'll take this here, and we're going to kind of swoop like so, and over. Now, right now, it's pink. It will be red eventually, but by doing that base coat in the, in the pinky white, it's going to allow the colors, the next layer, to show better. All right, so here we go. We'll do another one, and we're going to just kind of S along. So you're thinking about it as it's kind of curling around either side of the, uh, the, the thing. I'm so excited. This is going to be like a, a definite, like do a lot of painting kind of weekend. Because I deliver a cool project to my members every single, for the first three Mondays of the month. And then we've got our paintathon and the online paint night group. And of course, every day we have the advent stuff. Okay, you can kind of see, see where we're going with that. It's starting to come along. Colors aren't where we want them yet, and that's okay. Oh my gosh, I'm way over 20 minutes. Well, I'm not cutting you off. I'm just gonna have to like chop, chop, get it moving. So this red, I wanna, I wanna pop it a bit. So I'm gonna move some of the red over here. You know what I'm gonna do to pop it? I'm gonna grab some of that neon pink, mix it in. And that's just gonna make that red more, more vibrant and fiery. Crazy, right? It's almost like a, you know what? It looks almost like the uh, acrylic, uh, Brilliant Magenta from Artist Loft. That's really close. All right, and we're going to come right over that and bow. Oh, yeah, see, that guy pops. Now, I hope you guys have some really good gold paint because we're going to be using some gold paint. Those candles aren't done. They, they need to be goldified. Let's do, let's do a few other things. But we're just kind of swooshing right over those kind of twisty ribbons on the wreath. I love this one. It's kind of a good, fun, chill way of doing Friday night. And again, this one is really a mixy. We're doing a lot of, a lot of mixing. And if you like that red a lot and you want to kind of Add a little, add a little to your berries. By all means, go for it. I feel like I want my berries to pop a little bit. 
So they're still gonna look red against that hot pink background. And if you don't have a hot pink, you know, any other pink will do. You could probably get away with like a, well, not a baby pink, but some kind of a magenta or something else. So the thing I always think about, you know, when I'm designing a project for you guys, you know, because it's one thing I get these these colors in my brain. But then the next thing that you want to do is think about, you know, we need we need a good mix of darks and lights, um, you know, contrast. If everything's all exactly in the same value chain or same value, not value chain, that's business talk, all in the same kind of value, it's all going to visually mush together. And so that's why it was really important as we were building this wreath to, to build the layers of the different colors so that you could kind of get there. Oh, oh no, I'm painting on everything. Me and my stray brushes, huh? All right, I'm going to offload the paint on the red, on that little guy, rinse it, and we'll bring this up so you can. Oh, no, no. Yes, the palette fell on the floor, but it landed paint side up. Oops, okay. So here we go with this guy. You can see like all the little details. And up here for you guys, you can see all the little details. Hello. Okay. And so these are really meant to be viewed kind of close up. Oh my God, I just got paint all over my, my sleeve. Well, you know what? Every new, every new, new piece of clothing never never passes the paint test okay i'm getting distracted i apologize <laughs> all right so let's add i'm going to come back in here and grab just a tiny touch of white and i'm going to add oh you know what let's not with this guy we're going to use our, our toothpick again our toothpick is going to give us a much much tidier smaller line so we're going to dip it in the white and then we're going to add just a little tiny highlight on each of the berries. And you can probably get, you know, two to three, two to three dots. Keep it really small. And again, the toothpick helps me control the size. And that little highlight also helps bring the berries kind of visually forward. Makes them look like they're kind of shiny and glossy, like a holly berry or whatever kind of other berry. So that helps a little bit. Now it kind of you can really see it better. And then, okay, I will grab the, the brush because I'm going to want to make another mix. So we've got that kind of ribbon color we mix. I'm going to take a little bit of white, kind of blend it in there to create a lighter version. And that really does look like a, a light red, which I'm loving. I'm going to do a couple of just little, little highlighty bits on parts of the ribbons. I'm thinking the best place to highlight is probably going to be kind of towards the center of the ribbons. Maybe a little bit more white. If it starts to get too mushy and blend too much with the existing ribbon, you can always add a touch more. Get that out of my way. White. So again, because I have this taped down to my paper, it's really easy to work with and rotate. The first one of these I did. I didn't have it taped to anything. I was trying to hold it down and oh my gosh, it was exhausting. So we got a couple spots here where we got a little bit of, what am I trying to say? It was getting a little muddy. So just adding straight white in a very delicate line along those ribbons is gonna help pop them. And it's not, like, not necessarily gonna look like white, it's just gonna look like um, look like the ribbon is kind of catching the light. So the emphasis is mostly on the body that's in the center of it. Oh, whoop, okay, here's the top. There we go. All right, let's do some gold goldification. I do love me some gold. So if you haven't picked some up, you need to find your way to whichever store carries it. So Hobby Lobby, Michaels, whatever. This is the Extreme Sheen Deco Art um, Americana, um, or not Americana, but the Deco Art 24 karat gold. And it's fantastic. So squeeze a bit on here. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna have some fun with this guy. So I feel like we're gonna be using the two brushes that we've already started with. I'm gonna start with a little guy. 
And I want to add a little bit of gold to the candle, but we want it to be a light, light coating. So it just adds a bit of glitter, a little bit of sheen and pop. We, if we get it on too thickly, then we kind of lose all that work we just put in. So you want it to see, you want a transparent-ish coating or not fully opaque anyway. So now that gives us some good shimmer. Let's see if we can catch the light on that. Mm, maybe. Oh, it's there. And then we'll stay with that kind of concept of transparent. And we'll add a few bits of gold into the wreath, into the leaves. Maybe a little bit difficult to see. This is one of those lovely details that delights that delights the naked eye that is right in there. I tell you, I have such a thing for color. Sometimes I get very frustrated when I can't, I can't get it to show up the way I want it to on camera. I mean, I keep messing with lighting. One day I'm gonna have to just get myself a professional lighting person. So this gold is not shifting the overall color of this. It is mostly transparent, but then let's see. When we get it into the, the light, it gets little bits of shimmer. Hopefully you guys can kind of see that. It's subtle, but that's what we're looking for, subtle. All right, offload, rinse that brush. Make sure you don't get like gold coating because, yeah. Okay, that guy should be good for now. Taking the larger brush, and we're going to do just like a little line around the edge. I feel like this particular ornament really just wants like kind of a gold, a gold rim to finish. So keep it simple. Notice I'm doing slow kind of repetitive st strokes here so that I can keep them fairly even. Keep it little, keep it subtle. And it's okay if the paint is going on pretty thick on this guy. That's allowed. And we may even come back in with a second coat just to get it really, really, really thick and gold and shimmery. Oh, there's a paint booger in there. Sometimes you never know when paint booger is going to come up and bite you. So the other thing I really like about this project is it kind of feels a little bit like a little bit like making art, but also a little bit like doing crafts. I'm definitely, definitely a bit of a maker and also obviously a painter. Sometimes I get tired of painting on canvas, so it's really fun to go find other things to do, other things to paint on. All right, so we're going to peel this top off here. It should be dry in the middle. Yep. And quickly get the get a good gold coating on this top right here. And that might need a second coat. I don't know. Well, that's one of the reasons that I really, really, really love this deco art stuff. Is that it is it's very thick and gooey. So here we are now we've got this cool fun sheen and you if you wanted you could even make that gold rim a little bit thicker i'm kind of i'm kind of undecided i think i want a little bit of, i want to go be a little bit extra with my gold so i'm going to add a little bit more so another thing to think about as you're doing these strokes is make sure that you're doing a pulling motion because if you're trying to push or drag sideways, you just don't have the same level of dexterity. The wrist, this is the most natural movement for the wrist. And so setting yourself up to, to mostly make those kind of movements with your brush on your brush strokes, it's gonna give you be way better control. I remember being in like, I don't know, third grade art class at school or something and teacher mentioned that and I didn't get it. Like, I really didn't get it. And then, um, I don't know, one day, like 20 years later, I got it. So thank you, Maggie Berwick. Rest in peace. 
It's funny though, you know how like sometimes a grown up tells you something when you're a kid and you hear it, but you don't get it. And then one day it clicks and you're like, oh, that's what they meant. Mm -hmm. But I also love that that little piece of wisdom stuck with me because it's such a cool way to remember her, even though she's no longer with us. And I think it's been a long time because she was, she was not young when I was in school and I'm not really all that young anymore. All right. So I think we can call this guy good. You, if you want, if you're feeling like your, your candles are too meh, as in kind of muddy, you can always take just a pinch of that white and mix it in with the gold to lighten things up. Kind of create a shimmery sheen. I would also kind of drag the brush a bit to flatten it. And you could re-add just a touch of highlight kind of along that edge. So it's going to lose some bits shimmer, but not too much of it. A little bit more of the white. And again, it's always good, you know, you do a project to pause and evaluate. Okay, what's working? What's not working? Anytime you feel like you've done something and it feels mushy, your brain goes, man, it's kind of like meh. Um, chances are, you need to either add some highlights or some shadows to really give it a little bit more dimension and pop. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had fun. Again, I'm Wendy Clinky from Blue Cat Studio, and I will be for online paint night, folks. I will be teaching at noon on Sunday, and we'll be doing the um, snowman selfies. Super cute. Inner circle, folks. I will be releasing this one to you guys as well on Sunday or Monday, whenever. I get it completely produced. There we go. And this is, of course, our fun ornament. And here's now, look at our collection. It's coming along. How fun are those? Can you imagine, like, the delight, you know, as you have one of these and you, even as a grown-up, you can flip it over and be like, oh, look, I got this one. I remember when I painted that. All the things. So I love you guys, and we will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye. Let's see, where's the off button? There it is. Bye.